Hey up Sofa Squad and welcome to this new video where I'm going to be briefly discussing an article that I've read recently um, that I found in Psychology Today written by Joe Navarro MA entitled When the Narcissist Fails. Before I begin, I want to make it clear that the article in question does not actually refer to Donald Trump. It merely refers to narcissists in general. I am the one who am taking the characteristics described in this article and applying them to Donald Trump in light of the current situation. I will read out the characteristics outlined in the article and though I am applying them to Donald Trump, I will let you guys <laughs> watching this at home draw your own conclusions. So, this is what we can expect to happen when a narcissist fails, according to the writer of this article, Joe Navarro, M.A. Number one, they will falsely claim that everything is fine and that there is nothing wrong. They will try to first misdirect us or claim there is nothing to the allegations or circumstances. Number two, if evidence is presented, they will seek to have it invalidated or claim that it is false, fake or product of vague conspiracies, but most certainly not true. Three. Any evidence presented and those that present it will be attacked aggressively and vindictively. The better the evidence, the more aggressive the attack. Individuals who are doing the right thing by reporting criminal acts, unethical behaviour or failings are, are to be discredited, humiliated, hounded and bullied. Not even their families are to be spared if need be. The narcissist will engage supporters or enablers to simultaneously attack those who offer proof or evidence, even if it embarrassingly exposes their poodle-like behaviour as that of spineless sycophants. 4. Foolproof evidence will be portrayed as false and the result of pettiness, jealousies, bad actors, malicious individuals, negativity, haters, enemies, losers, conspirators, opposition, gain seekers, the faithless, or as we are now seeing now in American politics, fake news, or deep state actors. 5. They lash out with vindictiveness. The malignant narcissist will continue to talk about themselves in glowing terms, irrespective of their actual situation, as they are incapable of introspection, much less contriteness. They will trumpet their greatness their achievements, real or imagined, their full infallibility, and even portray themselves as worthy of being revered rather than reviled. Number six, they will seek to find someone to blame for their troubles or downfall. Preferably someone that cannot defend themselves. A scapegoat is always useful. 
and when there is not a real one, one will be invented. If they are not promoted or fired, it is because of a cabal at work was against them. If they cheat their business partners, it was because they deserved it. Number 7. As circumstances become dire, the narcissist will not take any responsibility ever. Anything that has gone wrong is the responsibility of others. They will blame spouses as undeserving of their greatness. Ignorant colleagues who just don't measure up, the disloyal, oh how they love to blame the disloyal, those who abide by rules and laws, because ironically they abide by rules and laws, or those that just clearly did not understand the very specialness of the narcissist. Everyone, and I mean everyone, from people long gone to the peripherally connected to the earthly departed, will be blamed for the failure or downfall of the narcissist. Once more, it is never their fault. 8. In the process of casting blame, even the most loyal and stalwart will be discarded and degenerated if needed with reptilian indifference. For the malignant narcissist, there is only the good, those that provide blind, unwavering loyalty who are useful, and everyone else who is an enemy, useless, and thus bad. Whether you are in or out, good or bad, is not determined by history, by friendship, sacrifices, or how well you have performed in the past. It is determined by the capricious and selfish needs of the narcissist, and that can change in a moment. 9. Expect lies to increase and to be repeated exponentially. They will, even in light of factual evidence to the contrary, lie more profusely and adamantly. Lies are, and always will be, the number one tool of the malignant narcissist. The only difference now is that in facing failure or public ridicule, the lies must increase in frequency and audacity to the point of incredul incredulity. The narcissist will expect supporters, the unethical and enablers, to lie for them or even create plausible alibis that they imperil others by compelling them to lie is the collateral damage the malignant narcissist does as they trash in despair sorry as they thrash in despair when they are failing or caught number 10 and while lies will increase so too will be the need to devalue others in order to further value themselves. They will attack everyone and anyone in the most vicious and vindictive ways. This is when we see their rage come through. Not just anger, but unbridled rage. They will say things that shock the conscience and they expect everyone to swallow what they say, much as their enablers do. The most decent of persons will be attacked, mocked, ridiculed, and turned into a human chew toy as the narcissist unleashes untethered rage and hatred. They will dip down into a bottomless cauldron of antipathy and, like, an arterial spurt will sprue this toxic brew far and wide with metronomic regularity. Number 11. The malignant narcissist, lacking guilt or a conscience, 
is only concerned with respect and not being publicly shamed. Any kind of public embarrassment will cause them further anger, further rage, further attacks, further unethical comportment and unprecedented incivility. Number 12. If the narcissist is going to be brought down, they will also seek to bring everyone else around them down to vindictively make them suffer. How the narcissist vilifies, lashes out or destroys others is up to the morbid creativity and depravity of the malignant narcissist, the viable tools they have available and of course how dire or desperate the situation. The internet and social media are certainly useful as lives can be ruined with a single tweet. But so are guns and rifles, poison and even assassins for hire. And if they command a country, they can put the security organs or the military to work on their behalf. Number 13. In certain situations, as the end nears, the suffering of others is paramount to the malignant narcissist. It is their way of elevating themselves, sick as that sounds, by malevolently paying back society with even more suffering. As they lash out, they will show no concern or empathy because they have none. If others are suffering because of their actions, the narcissist simply does not care. Lacking a conscience or any kind of remorse, much like Robert Hare's psychopath, they sleep very well at night while everyone else is anxious, worried, stressed, physically or psychologically traumatises, all the while nervously and justifiably pondering what further malevolence will take place. And finally, number 14, as they face failure, arrest, indictment or dismissal, they will endlessly air their grievances. Narcissists are natural wound collectors and as such, they have been collecting and nurturing social slights and perceived wrongs just for this occasion. They will wallow in victimhood, claiming they have been relentlessly and needlessly persecuted. They, of course, expect their attorneys, followers or enablers to subserviently echo their flatulent claims. Now, I haven't read all of these characteristics in their entirety. And if you wish to do so, I will leave a link to the article in the description. Whether or not we can apply every one of these characteristics to Donald Trump's behaviour, I think one thing is certain. The next two months or so of Donald Trump's final days in office before Joe Biden is finally inaugurated um, are going to be very interesting to say the least. There could be tough times ahead. Things could get worse before they get better. But there is hope that when Joe Biden and his administration are allowed to take over, they can begin to finally undo the damage that Trump and his administration have done. Well, that's all I've got for you for now. 
But if you've liked this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you're new here, do subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss another video. Okay, bye for now.